In this video, I'm going to create a Stingray PBS shader in Maya and then import the textures that I created in Substance Painter and apply them to that shader. But first, I need to make sure that my Viewport 2.0 render setter settings are set to DirectX 11. So go to Windows, Settings and Preferences, Preferences, go to Display, and make sure Viewport 2.0 rendering engine says DirectX 11. By default it's set to OpenGL. DirectX 11 is needed to have the Stingray shaders show up properly and the normal map um, look correct in the viewport because we created a DirectX 11 normal map from Substance Painter. So click Save and if you needed to change that settings you'll have to close out Maya and open it up again in order for the changes to take effect. So now I'm going to select my mesh and I'm going to right click, assign new material, make sure I'm in the Maya tab and click Stingray PBS. And that has now added the Stingray PBS material to the object and it's opened up in the attribute editor. So you can see that there's use color map, normal map, metallic, roughness, emissive, and AO map. The only map we aren't going to be using is emissive because the hammer doesn't have any emissive properties. So if I scroll down, there is a textures tab here, and next to color, if I click on this little input checker box, it will bring me to the attribute editor image name, click on this folder, and that will bring me right to my source images folder because I had my project set already. If your project was not set correctly, it won't bring you to the source images folder. If that happens, make sure you cancel out, go to file project set, and set it to your hammer project so that you'll get relative paths to the file names rather than absolute paths. So I'll click my base color, click open, and you'll see that it just says source images and then hammer base color. That is a relative path. It means that it's relative to that project directory. If your file path names are relative, then when you move to another computer and set your project, it's going to find the images. If your paths are absolute, meaning something like C colon slash username slash hammer slash source images, it will show up here, but if you move to another prop, uh, computer, you may not um, be able to find the images because they will be the path to them would be in a different place. So always set your project and make sure the paths to your textures are relative. To go back to the previous window, I'll click on this little icon, and then I'll add the normal map. Same way I did the base color and go through that and do that for each of the maps. And AO. All right, so those have been added, but nothing's happened yet. And that's because we need to t turn on the attributes over here. So if I turn on color map, you'll see that still nothing has happened. And that's because right now I'm in shaded mode instead of texture mode. So I need to hit six on the keyboard to get into texture mode and my base color will now show up. Then I can turn on each of my different maps. And as I do, you'll see that the material changes to include those maps. So once that is done. I can hit 7 on the keyboard to get into lighting mode and you can see that there's just a, a um, basic light map on here that's creating some default lighting, uh, but it is not very interesting lighting. It's very flat. So I'm going to go create lights and I'm going to just add in a point light, hit the move tool and position that light to give some nice specular highlights on my mesh. And that looks pretty good. So then if I rotate around, you can see that it's still pretty dark in the back here. So I'm going to go create lights and ambient light. And I added that, but nothing happened. And that is because the default settings in the, the uh, Stingray PBS 
material only allow one light. So I need to come over to the Stingray PBS material and click Open Shader FX. Then in here, I'm going to hold Alt and Middle Mouse to scroll over. I'm going to select this standard base, and you can see now in the Attribute Editor, over here, there's a setting for lights, which is set to 1. So I'm going to change that to 2 and hit Enter, and you'll see as soon as I did that, the effect of the um, ambient light started to show up. So I can close that out now, and then I can adjust my ambient light and not have it be quite so bright, so maybe something like 0.8. So now I can rotate around my image and um, you know, I can zoom in and see the effects of the roughness detail I have there and that kind of thing. So it's going to look a little bit different than it did in Substance Painter because the lighting is a little different and the shading model is slightly different, but it will give you a similar effect. So then I'm going to turn off the grid and I'm going to go into my Viewport 2.0 render settings, click on the option box, and there's a couple things I want to turn on here. Um, one is screen space ambient occlusion. I'm going to enable that and you can see that that adds in some occlusion in areas like that that make it look a little more realistic and interesting. Then I'm going to go to anti-aliasing and turn on multi-sampling anti-aliasing. That way if I'm getting any kind of anti-aliasing along the edges it will help to clean that up. And once I've done that I am all set and my hammer is now set up with that Stingray PBS material, some basic lighting, and all of the textures that were exported from Substance Painter.